Hello everybody, so besides manga, I've also been collecting other pieces of anime slash manga merchandise and I wanted to share that with you today. So today we'll be looking at my art book collection when it comes to different types of series throughout media. So the first one I have here is Blanc et Noir by Takeshi Obata. Now Takeshi Obata is famously known for the illustrations in Death Note and Bakuman, but he also has some other works um, from an anime based on the game Go and also Bobo Bobo Bobo. I think I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. I apologize. So when we open it here, we're first greeted by these three beautiful laminated panels of art and I love the size of this because it really allows us to see all the details drawn into each of these panels like look at the colors used here it's so gorgeous in my opinion so here we have another death note piece and this is the go one I was talking about as well and then here I believe is just some specialty work for him and I believe this is actually a prototype for Ryuk before he finalized um, Ryuk's final design. Okay, so let's get into the art book itself. Now this art book is quite lengthy in dimension, so to say. So let's open this up. First it starts with Death Note and majority of this art book is Death Note as it is the most popular piece of work that he's had so far. And I must say that looking at this up close is one hell of experience because you can see so much detail in the artwork that's, that he's been putting into. Like, this has to be one of my favorite panels here. We have Naomi Misara um, before her death, spoilers, and then Misa Amane. And I love that you can see like the texture of the leather on this character's jacket. It's so beautiful and in the creasing of the jeans and the fading, very nice. So let's go further in. And as we go further in, we can see this panel over here, how much symbolism is put into the world of Death Note. So we have over here, light standing in kind of like the pose where Jesus was crucified on the cross. And right behind him, we have the cross here and a lot of angelic looking designs or you know biblical stuff going on in the background as well with the cross and the golden rays so let's go on so here we have l and watari and their team and a bunch of other death note stuff which is very beautiful to see up close now i want to show you one panel that has to be one of my favorites so this one is another one that i really like because we get to see light in different outfits other than his suit and tie so again, here is a lot of symbolism with the cross representing, you know, Jesus or God as light wants to be the God of the new world, so to say. And here has to be my favorite panel in this book because like we see Misa and light with their Shimigami, the Shimigami behind them. And it just looks like they're about to prepare for something. And I love this panel so much. So moving on. So I want to show you one more thing about his specialty work over here. So this is actually David Bowie from um, the movie Labyrinth as he plays the Goblin King. I forgot his name. And this reminds me of Prince Noctis. I don't know who that's supposed to be. This is a Red Riding Hood rendition. Now these two are just gorgeous designs in my opinion. Such polar opposites. Okay, so as we go on, so this is another piece of um, Takeshi's work. I don't know what this is. I just skipped over it very briefly. And I love the designs that he puts into his characters. So nice. Okay, and then we move on to the one that's focused on Go. And these character designs are a lot more laid back and chill. But what I really like about them is the variety of outfits that he puts them in. These are great. It's so much more vibrant than Death Note and a lot of just, it's so different, you know, the vibe is so completely different. There we go. All right. And then at the back, we have some, you know, um, notes from Takeshi and his technique and all that stuff. A very interesting book to read through. It's just that I don't have the time to fully go through it. I wish I did. So let's move on to the next one. So the next one I have over here is... Kintaro Miura's 
Berserk illustration file. Now, rest in peace, Kintaro Miura. My God, you are one hell of a guy. Now, Berserk has to be one of my favorite pieces of literature because of how dark this can get, like, thematically. And the amount of violence and gore in it is so out of this world and the dark fantasy elements with horror in it and the storytelling is one of a kind to be honest with you and berserk also inspired many other games such as you know bloodborne or dark souls so to say heavily dark souls heavily now this here is the backstory of our main character guts now look how fucking metal this is like guts was born from his mother's dying corpse and they decided to to pick him up a mercenary band and they trained him on how to become a warrior and a killer and the next panel over here we see guts as a child accidentally murder his abuser and also mentor gambino so we have other photos of guts casca you know fighting um the assassins some apostles over there zod the immortal i love this look how kind of like you know how should i put this like so green so to say but you know it's very otherworldly very ethereal in my opinion so beautiful sketches over here from the manga griffith as you know just great so then there's like some you know character backstory to each of the characters that were introduced and i kind of shot myself in the foot with this because this is actually all in french so and i don't understand any french so i kind of fucked up on my part so that's just like a warning to you guys before you buy something with text in it make sure it's in a language that you can read and understand because i missed out on so much content here beautiful stuff okay moving on so I have another dark fantasy series, and this one is Claymore, imported straight from Japan. Now, I want to collect the Claymore manga so bad because I read it digital several years ago, and I loved every part of it. So here we go. And when we open this up, we are greeted by these beautiful, beautiful panels. And the paper in it is so high quality as well. They really put a lot of love and dedication into creating in crafting this art book in terms of presentation. So Claymore is basically about um, these female warriors who are infused with demon blood, who are called Yoma. And now an organization that you know recruits these Claymores or creates these Claymores sends these Claymores to hunt down Yoma that are terrorizing villages and they receive payment for it. And later we learn that not only are there female claymores, but in the past there were also male claymores. And the male claymores were very flawed in a sense that when they released their Yoma powers, they became addicted to it. And it's described as releasing sexual pleasure when they activate their Yoma abilities. So they became addicted to it. And if you release your Yoma powers for an extended period of time, you turn into a creature, an awakened being, and you are unable to revert back to your human form. So now there is a lot of Yoma and awakened beings that our main protagonist Claire and her crew have to hunt down. And it gets into a lot more conspiracy, which I really like because it adds a lot more layer and depth into the story. So here we have just some character designs. I don't think these are from Claymore but probably from um, the author's other works as well. So here we have uh, the crew, Teresa, Claire. I think that's Miria, Maria. Oh, this is, this is a beautiful panel over here. I love this, the reflection of water that Claire is in. And then this one is also really nice. You can see like the shadows and the sun ray from the light and so from the forest and all that stuff. Very beautiful. Very famous Claymore imagery right over here. So let's just go on. So here's another member of Claire's gang. And here's the whole team over here. Beautiful. 
I want the box set for this so bad. Holy shit. I love this story so much. But yeah, very dark fantasy-esque with a lot of conspiracy themes going on. I love this. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Let me just put this away properly before I damage it even more. All right, so the next one is something that I hold very special to me. And this is the Dragon Ball visual history. Now, growing up, when I was in the second grade, I moved to a different school and I didn't have any friends there. But that was also the first time we ever got cable TV in my family. And if you're in Canada, you are familiar with YTV. And every day at 8 to 10 p.m., they would show two episodes of Dragon Ball and two episodes of Dragon Ball Z. And that was my life back then. You know, I watched from the first episode of Dragon Ball to the first episode of Dragon Ball Z all the way to the end on YTV. And that was my source of entertainment every night. I look so forward to watching that as it would provide me with a sense of relief, you know. I'd just unwind at the end of the day, finish up homework if I had any, and just watch some Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Now, I was able to make a lot of friends after watching these because, you know, it provided a topic of discussion and also lended to playing imaginary fights and, you know, pretending you're these characters on the playground and going into Super Saiyan and yelling so loud. And this holds a fantastic place in my memories as a child. Now, I know that the um, box set is available back up on Right Stuff, so I might cop that as well. Now, I love the art here. It's very friendly and so easy on the eyes and very playful jackie chan master roshi krillin my god so you know going into um the late akira toriyama's later works dragon dragon ball super i'm not really a fan of the work here um it looks very dumbed down in my opinion i'm more of a fan of the older works like look how sharp and crisp Goku's drawing is here and look at the colors they use it's so vibrant and beautiful in my opinion and I love the designs for the machines and everything is so intricate and so much detail is put into all this stuff and I like it when the characters are wearing different costumes you know it adds a lot of variety to our perception of them so that is Dragon Ball visual history oh I want to show you this without the slip cover and look how nice this is. Beautiful. Just beautiful. So if you're planning to pick this up, I highly recommend it. It is definitely something that lovers of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z should have in their collection. Like, look at the cover for this. How can you pass this up? Beautiful. Okay. So the next one I want to show you is another piece of media that's been in my life for a very long time especially since childhood and this is pokemon now this is the art of pokemon adventures this is just like the manga art now it's not the original pokemon art like done by ken sugimori that you see of like chubby pikachu and the ones on the pokemon cards that were originally released back in like the late 90s this is the manga art, so we see over here. And what I like about this is that, you know, it's a different interpretation on the art of Pokemon. And also, I know that the manga is by far the best piece of Pokemon media out there in terms of story and world building, which is something I also want to collect, but I heard volume one of the collector's edition is extremely difficult to find and quite expensive, so... I might hold off on that for a second or I might collect volumes two up until whatever is released and just look for volume one when I have the time and the financial availability as well. See, these are some scenes from the manga. It's so nice. Oh, now I really want to start collecting it. Some sketches of characters. Beautiful. Spencer. I think this is from like pokemon rangers so they even cover some spin-off games as well i'm assuming that's incorporated into the manga 
And I like that how in the manga, there's a lot of recurring characters. So it's not like after, you know, the Kanto region or Red and Blue, you don't see the Generation 1 characters anymore. No, they're actually carried on to Gold and Silver and then later on into, you know, older gener and sorry, more recent generations, they're also included, which is very fabulous. You know, it's nice to see a lot of recurring characters from their childhood pop up. Now, the second last thing I want to show you guys is another art book that is focused on a video game franchise that I hold very dear to my heart. And this is the Monster Hunter illustrations. Now, this is focused on Monster Hunter, uh, I think, 3U or 4U. And this contains a lot of the concept art for the monsters that are included in the series thus far. Now, one of the main reasons why I love this so much is because it shows like the earlier concept designs before they finalized it in the game. So I believe this is supposed to, so this is the final concept art for Naskrilla, but this, this was the prototype over here. So it's fascinating to see the design, the designs of previous, you know, models for these monsters and what they were originally aiming for. So one of the, another reason why I really like this is because we get to see a whole glossary of the weapons that are used. So we have like, you know, the Rathos Charge Blade, the Zenogar Insect Glaive, um, some Kinsect over here, and a lot of other different types of weapons, Lance, Long sword, great sword, sword and shield, bow, bow gun, hunting horn, very beautiful stuff. Guitar, hunting horn, I think this is Fatalis's, or sorry, Delamador, Teostra, Brachidios, Yan Garuga, whole variety of stuff over here. And then finally, we also get to the armor designs, and holy shit, Monster Hunter armor designs are top notch. Like, this is great inspiration if you're into world building or fantasy writing. Look at these designs over here. Look at this dark hero design. Like, oh my goodness, so beautiful. Look at this like priest design, you know, shining hero Tetsukabra over here. Just gorgeous designs. Um, Teostra, Kushala Deora, Kirin, Oshiri Kirin. Oh my goodness, I love it so much. And, you know, I had so many, I had, I still do have a lot of memories in relation to this game. And it's something I've been keeping up very frequently. You know, I have Generations, Ultimate, I have For You, I have World and Iceborne on my PS4 Pro, and I'm loving every single game from it. I also have Rise on my Switch, which I've played to death already. Rajang, Brakadios. And then some other designs from characters that we see in the game as well, including the piggy and also our palico, which is our companion on our quests to complete slaying monsters. So there are some more concept sketches, which I really like, and some storyboards as well. Okay, so we're approaching the final one, and this is going to be the largest one yet. So I also purchased... The Art of Final Fantasy, The Sky by Yoshitaka Amano. Now, this comes with three art books. Not just one, but three. So we're just going to go through one very briefly because I would be here for hours talking about this. So look, there's three. That's crazy. So let's look at Final Fantasy, The Art, The Sky by Yoshitaka Amano. Now... Wow. Just look at it. Look how beautiful this is. Like, there's so much story in these panels. And I love the black and white ones. Um, the monster sketches or the summon sketches. Because it's just so much ink. And it portrays so much depth to it. I'm such a fan of this. Now here is... A beautiful panel. I think this is Final Fantasy 2, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Final Fantasy 2 over here. And over here it says, Every time, everywhere, monsters are anti-heroes. Interesting. So then there's some character sketches. Furion, you know. 
Guy, Lionheart, Sid, Gordon, Maria, Ricard Highwind, or Richard Highwind, Paul, Joseph, Minu. Oh, I like this design a lot. Emperor of Palamacia. Pretty cool, if you ask me. I'm going to go on to more character designs and, you know, monster designs and all this stuff. Very nice. I love how it's so, like, rough, the sketch. And then he just colors in the highlights or what we really need to know about the, um, you know, the color palette for the creature. Beautiful. Very nice. Oh, my God. I like this one, too. I'm going to Final Fantasy 3. Attacking. Look how... Oh my god! Oh, I, Can you imagine that someone literally has to think about this and then illustrate it? Like, before this, they didn't have any idea what something looked like. So they had to create it from their mind. That's insane. Oh my god, look at this. Look how beautiful this is. This came from someone's mind and they translated it onto pen and paper. Crazy. You know, I didn't have a lot of appreciation for, you know, drawing or artwork in general until I started collecting these art books. And I started learning how to draw myself and I'm still super shit at it. But it gave me a lot more appreciation to see the amount of effort and time that one needs to dedicate in order to succeed or even improve. And it's just mind boggling how much hours and months and years someone puts into a passion my goodness some other illustrations look at this oh wow that's nice i love how vibrant the colors are here and then some ink drying over here look at this i love the shading and the shadow on this panel over here and then the armor for this character this one's really nice. You get to see a lot of the depth with the shadows and how he plays with it. And here as well. Oh, God. Oh, God. Very nice. All right. So there's two more, but I think we'll put it at a rest for now. Now, guys, you know, I had a lot of fun showing this to you. If you want me to go through them separately in, in a video for each of them individually, I'd love to. Just, you know, flip through the pages and show, give you guys my thoughts on them i'd really be happy to do that um you know hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it please be sure to leave a like and a comment on what your thoughts are for some of the art books do you own any of them what are your thoughts on them if you do do you want to add any of them into your collection anyways guys stay strong stay healthy i will catch you in the next video later